Good morning and welcome to Together in God, a media ministry of Grace in St. John's Lutheran Churches of the ELCA. We are excited to share with you today God's message of love and hope for all. Today's service is brought to you by Grace Lutheran Church at 202 West Grand Avenue in Eau Claire. Please join us now in worship. Good morning and welcome. We're glad that you could join us through this uh, different medium uh, during this difficult time. We, we pray that the service we've put together be meaningful to you. This is a project of Grace Lutheran Church and University Lutheran Church who are cooperating. I did want to mention to our people that uh, Cliff Thompson passed away this week and also Clifton Sorensen. Uh, information about their deaths is available in the leader telegram. I invite you to have a moment to sit quietly as Elaine plays some music to help us reflect.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's Gospel comes from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of John and will be told by storyteller 
Jason Chestnut of Ancos Films. The Word of God from John 9. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this guy or his parents, that, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of the one who sent me while it's day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had said this, he spit on the ground and mixed mud with his saliva and spread it over the man's eyes, saying to him, go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back. Able to see. Now, the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, yeah, it's him. Others are saying, no, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking, then, then how are your eyes open? And he answered, the man called Jesus. He, he, he made mud, spread it on my eyes, told me, uh, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and <laughs> received my sight. And they said to him, well, where is he? And he said, I don't know. Well, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now, it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and open the eyes. The Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he answered, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, now I see. And some of the Pharisees said, this man isn't from God, for, for he doesn't observe the Sabbath. Others said, well, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So again, they spoke to the man saying, well, well, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And he answered, he, he's a prophet. Now, the Judeans didn't believe that the man had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had formerly been blind and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we don't know how it is that he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He's of age. He will speak for himself. Now, the parents said this because they were afraid of the Judeans, for the Judeans had already decided that anyone who confessed Jesus as the Messiah would be thrown out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he's of age, ask him. So, for the second time, they brought the man who had been blind and said, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered, I don't know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, I was blind. And now I see. I said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered, I've told you already and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Oh. Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple. We, we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. And he answered, 
here's an astonishing thing. You don't know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but, but God listens to the one who worships God and obeys God's will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were from God, he could do nothing. And he said, you were, you were born entirely in sin. You're trying to teach us? And they drove him out. And Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he saw him, he said to him, do you believe in the son of humanity? And he said, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe. And Jesus said, you've seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. And he answered, Lord, I believe. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who don't see may see and that those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said, surely we're not blind, are we? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you wouldn't have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. Grace to you in peace from the God who holds us, especially when we have difficulty holding it together. Amen. The man who was born blind was an odd witness to God's work. Jesus' disciples thought that he and perhaps his family were sinful and deserving of divine punishment. Later on, the religious leaders called him a sinner as well. In his day, only one way was available for him to survive. He was a beggar, the object of others' pity. In key moments in the story, other people talk about him rather than talking to him or even allowing him to speak. But when Jesus meets the man, his life is transformed. He takes center stage in this gospel story and becomes an active witness whose testimony some try to dispute, but which they cannot ignore. The person overlooked becomes the first recipient of God's grace, and then he became the one proclaiming that grace to others. He could not allow himself to be treated as an object any longer. The healing power of God called him in a way he could not resist. My friend Tim Barr tells the story of his friends, Eric and Alicia Soasso. They were Honduran immigrants living in Houston when another national emergency, the storms of Katrina, hit. Not surprisingly, no one asked them to organize an effort to help those displaced by the storm. But maybe it's more accurate to say only God asked them to help in this way. The couple walked around the full Astrodome carrying a sign written in the many languages from their home in Honduras, all those indigenous languages. The sign told people that the couple was there to help, to help those who are far from home. They walked around the dome holding up this sign among the thousands who'd been brought there and gathered people whom they were uniquely qualified to assist. Over the next several months, they would work helping them find food, housing, and even jobs. When my friend asked them how they managed to do this with little resources of their own, this is the response he heard. The Bible says that even if you only have a cup of cold water, you should offer it to the person in need. Sometimes we don't even have cold water, just plain water, but that still is a blessing to the person who is thirsty. So that's what we did. 
We offered what we had, and we promised to work with people to help them get back on their feet. No government or religious authorities would have gone to Erica or to Eric and Alicia for guidance on meeting the needs who were, of those who were displaced any more than the people in our biblical story would have gone for wisdom to the one that God chose. But God's go-to witnesses are often those whom we would not choose. God invites us to the margins of our communities, equipped not with pity and a handful of change, but with ears open and eyes attentive to the signs held up in such places. God chooses unlikely witnesses to the work God is doing in our midst. So this week, let us pay attention to those places and the challenge and hope that the people who dwell there bring us. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their need. Holy God, you call us to witness to your unfailing love in Christ Jesus. Even when we don't feel it ourselves, even when we don't feel qualified, even when we don't know how to do it, you fill and surround us with this love that will never let us go. Open our hearts and our lips to proclaim it and to live it for our neighbors, the people you love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray you will remove all the things that make us blind to your presence among us. Teach us to trust, even when we cannot see, that you are near and that in you is life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders around the world in government and in health care and research as they create policy and practice during this time. We pray for essential personnel who do not have the option to work from home. Guard them and guide them as they work for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for our struggles of body, mind, or spirit, for those who are ill with any disease, for those whose support systems depend on meeting with other people, for those who cannot get the care they need because of scarcity or overfull hospitals. Help us to know and to do what we need to care for all in this time, and bring your miracle of healing to these we name now. Dolores, Jim, Andrea, Marty, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are heartbroken because of death and loss. We have given up so much in order to keep one another safe in this pandemic, yet some have not been saved. For those who grieve the death of a loved one by any cause, we pray for comfort and hope. For the families of Grace members Clifton Sorensen and Clifford Thompson, who died this week, and others we name now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face look on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for being part of our Together in God worship service. Your prayers and financial support are always deeply appreciated. Please tune in again next Sunday at the same time or join us in person at 10 a.m. in the church. Remember the 9 a.m. coffee hour. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.